Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. good to have you with us. Good to have you with us. How are you? Great to see you, Chile. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, so I guess this is like a, and hello again to our um, Q&A. Thank you so, so much to Bishop Zach and uh, Dr. Sophia and George Luca. Uh, congratulations again <laughs> on your doctorship. Um, yeah, so good morning or good evening, depending on where our participants are in the world. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to just jump into this uh, session. I, I know that uh, people have actually, um, they joined us about 10 minutes ago already. So, um, but I do want to encourage everyone to just, um, yeah, if you're ready with a question, feel free to to go ahead, uh, raise your hand or do send it in, in the chat now. Um, Bishop Zach, and and for you too, uh, Cyprian, we had actually... Um, comments and questions coming in during your presentations. Um, so I am going to, um, let me just read the one that we had from um, the Rev Kabiro um, coming in during your uh, presentation of Bishop Zach. Um, so he noted that it is true that Christianity is not the gospel and the gospel is not Christianity. However, the gospel may not move on its own without Christians fulfilling the great commission and being witness of Christ from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, into the whole world. So here's a question. Where does Christian witness and gospel witness interface? Should we not separate the mistake Christian witness made in the past, learn from them, and now do Christian witness as Jesus commanded? Let me know if you'd like me to repeat that question or if you're able to grab that. Uh, it's a big question. Um, because first of all, the, the reading of that, um, you see, our we are witnesses that's who we are hmm. um we are followers of jesus it's the holy spirit it's the spirit of christ at work in us and through us and by the way the holy spirit does need us <laughs> for the gospel to progress <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because this is God's word, you know, and there are stories of uh, people having an encounter with Jesus without anybody speaking to them. So it's the work of evangelism, uh, totally, absolutely, um, is, is, is the work of bearing witness. It's, it's testifying to the wonder of Jesus but that testimony is made possible by the Holy Spirit mm. in us and through us. Yes. Um, the Great Commission, let me just disabuse us of, of language that has been imported into the biblical narrative that is not existent. First of all, uh, scholars have shown us that there is actually no Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. Mm. Uh, that text therefore that was translated therefore go and make disciples of all nations it's a mistranslation it's actually not therefore go it is and there is no great commission it is as you go exactly. make nations disciples mm -hmm. let's also say this it's actually not make disciples of all nations because the make disciples of all nations is saying you can find choose. individuals you can choose <laughs> pick yeah. and choose no it's make <clears throat> nations disciples yes. and that's to say therefore the work of the spirit is to draw people into the fold of christ our work mm -hmm. is together mm -hmm. to see the transformation of the gospel in community mm -hmm. in societies that is to say that nations will begin to reflect the justice and love of god yeah. as that as they respond to the to the gospel the response of the gospel is that which the Lord himself does as we bear witness to it. So, um, yeah, when Jesus came, we didn't ask for him. So, I mean, God did it without us asking. <laughs> so God is going to do a lot of things. This is his world. He will change it. Um, I, I will argue and I will stop at this one, that even the whole idea of God's mission, all that is... Uh, you know, I once had a chat with my wife, uh, she's my wife, and I said, just suppose one day I walk into our bedroom and we are together and I say, uh, I have a mission on you. 
<laughs> I have a mission. She must turn to me and say, what, what have I done? What? <laughs> you have a mission? You can't express your relationship with the one that is yours, belongs to you, in terms of mission. This is God's world. He made it. Why should, be, why should God be on a mission in his world? Yeah, it's heavy with military language. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, much could be said. Thank you so much for that, uh, Bishop. I hope that uh, Rev Kabira is happy with that answer. Um, it'd be interesting to hear your response back, Rupira, but um, I'm aware of the time as well. We we'll have another session in 15 minutes. So I'll just quickly run through another question that we had um, for you, Cyprian. It was um, during your presentation, you mentioned um, obviously like citizenship um, and in a context of um, like the kingdom as well. So we had uh, a comment from Emil who is here with us. So Emil, you can please feel free to, to swing in if you'd like to um, speak out your question. Um, but uh, he said, how do we relate this to Romans 13 um, when Paul is describing the empire as servant of God for distributive justice, um, merit system, and re retributive punitive? So Ruth in her presentation yesterday mentioned that this view has been expressed by the reformed tradition in Calvin, but it seems that the empire in this presentation is deemed to have a totalizing claim to power and can also be described as a beast. So the question is, how do we reconcile this view in light of Romans 13? Please let me know if that's clear. I know your uh, presentation was a while ago, but uh, yeah. Uh, well, thank you for the question. It, it is a very uh, good and uh, a, a very challenging question, but I would, I would say it, uh, one or two things. First, uh, the reality of the empire or the reality of living confined to the limits of the empire is inescapable. And Bishop Zach also mentioned something like this in the, in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, it is not as if we get to choose uh, or get to speak as out, being outside of the empire. We have to acknowledge that we speak as people inside the empire, from within the empire. But uh, as inescapable as this reality is, uh, there is another thing that somehow in a miraculous divine way God works through and in spite of the realities of the human uh, fallen world uh, toward his purposes and uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know the empire is there uh, doing its thing, but, uh, you know, like someone said, uh, a broken uh, clock is right two times a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, uh, what the empire does is not in that very moment against something that God, but uh, that doesn't mean it is good. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, I don't know how else to put it, but I believe in spite of the many wrongs and, uh, uh, and um, let's call it uh, uh, injustice, uh, mm -hmm. and greed, and all the other things of the empire, uh, we cannot go on the moon and escape the empire. Mm -hmm. So I believe we should, uh, we should rise uh, to a level that is beyond the empire, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm not seeing any questions come through yet. Um, I hope that we are not nervous because we're in the presence of greatness. Please be free. Um, the bishop and, and doctor are, are here to, to answer our questions. Um, in the meantime, I also had a question for you, Bishop Zach, um, whilst I wait for other questions to, to pour in. We've, we've still got 10 minutes in the session. Um, so you made a distinction between, you know, Christian witness and gospel witness. Um, a question came in through Slido. It was actually from Renee. Um, Renee August, she, she asked, how might Zach describe the difference between gospel witness and prophetic witness? Um, I, to be honest, um, the nature of the gospel is that it's prophetic. Mm. That's the nature of the gospel. So um, prophetic means, um, prophetic is 
within the biblical narrative is thus says the lord it's the announcement of the will of god now and for tomorrow all of that is found in the gospel in the story of jesus um, jesus taught us to pray your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven mm -hmm. the announcement of the kingdom the vision that we need to have a sense of the world a way in which we inhabit the world that reflects the values the rule of god justice and love we are therefore to live in this world reflecting that prophetic presence if you if you choose mm. to to reflect love so let's put it this way the story i tell about um why in the way in which uh, the empires work. Empires draw lines. Mm. Empires draw barriers. Empires draw walls. Uh, borders. Borders. That's what empires do. Uh, but uh, the witness, the, the if you should say, the prophetic witness, the gospel witness, is that there is neither uh, black nor white. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. Mm -hmm. There is neither male or female. Social classes are broken down. Yes. That is prophetic. That is prophetic witness. That's God's will because prophetic witness is the announcement yes. of God's will. Prophetic witness is about living out the gospel uh, in context. But you see, none of us is the gospel. We mm -hmm. all submit to that gospel. So it's so myself and and the amazing thing is this it's god at work uh you remember cleop no no actually it's 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 peter peter mm -hmm. and cornelius you would think that peter is the one who went to do a mission at cornelius but god had already been talking with cornelius <laughs> jesus had already yes. been talking with cornelius yes. Yes. and and peter is shocked and surprised <laughs> you know and so who is bearing witness to the gospel it's not peter it is peter and cornelius yeah so peter could say and the holy we, spirit to both of them but that's the way it yeah, works yeah because the holy spirit is speaking yeah. to peter and yeah. to cornelius yeah. so peter could say i'm the one bearing witness to cornelius no that's not what it is peter New is joy. bearing witness to the gospel cornelius is bearing witness to the gospel yeah. and peter and cornelius discover each other yes in the gospel in the story of yes. Jesus. That's how they find each other, by the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's how fellowship is built. Yes. So yeah. it's, um, so yes, prophetic witness is gospel witness. Gospel witness is always prophetic because gospel witness mm -hmm. is the presence announcement of God's will. God's kingdom come. Uh, this thing about, let's put it differently. It's heaven come down. Yes. It's not <laughs> us waiting to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. We are to bear the witness of the gospel. A little down, a little heaven down here. Live God's will. Live, uh, live heaven on earth. Yes. <laughs> if I may add, uh, sorry, if yes. I may add something. Go ahead. Uh, because the gospel is a public truth, uh, it also uh, applies that as prophetic to the fact that we speak truth both to power, whether, I mean, we speak truth to power whether power means government or church <laughs> mm. so we, we we tell the truth uh the, the truth of the gospel is like a sword you know with two two edged sword two, two edged sword yeah, yeah. but the, the, the same thing with this is the point we are not we ourselves the gospel, in yeah. speaking that truth yeah it is a truth not just to them but it it's was. to us yes because yes. we too are captive yeah. to abuse of power yes. we are we are vulnerable to abuse of yeah. power you know the point that i made you get a phd and suddenly you think you 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 know more than everybody you yeah. suddenly you become an expert no yeah. it's it's in fact the more you be, read the less you realize how literal you know you know they say phd stands for permanent head damage <laughs> <laughs> thank you so so much to both of you uh for those responses um cheryl did have a, a question for uh bishop zach um which you added to Slido, but I would probably invite you to, to please say it here. But before that, um, 
actually this this doesn't really have a person that is directed to him specifically so um maybe either or both of you can answer this but cornelia in the chat has added um is an institution like certain churches in itself bad good structures enable to carry out a lot of work distribute money equally share resources gather ex expertise what would be a new appropriate language for mission any suggestions um first of all um I hope we are persuaded. And so it's not about replacement. <laughs> we are not in the business of replacing this for this. That's why I suggest that we've got to come to a place where we renounce. Mm. We must renounce patterns of power. We must renounce language that demeans the other, that dehumanizes. So it's not about replacing this language for this. It's actually a process of saying, okay, uh, forgive no us, Lord, <laughs> no more. So not number one. Number two, uh, it's there's actually the word witness is there we don't have to look too far that's it's witness it's it's witness we are called to bear witness to the gospel to the city of jesus um so it's 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 all there um we don't have to look too far and the the thing i was actually saying is that and we've checked this across and i've done this across the continent in africa i've checked it in the middle east uh, none of these peoples and asia I was talking to a Korean uh, 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 scholar and I asked, what is the word mission in the Korean language? And he, and he said, no, it's not there. It's, it, you can't find an equivalent because it's, mission is always about conquest. Mission is about always dominating the other. So, so all I'm really saying is that, and we can find meaningful words in the biblical narrative and witnesses offered is really faithful witness. It's there in all our, our mother tongues. Um, and, and, and I think, therefore, they, we don't have to look too far. Uh, mm. If I may, uh, when uh, Jesus announces the coming of the Spirit, he doesn't say, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes uh, and you shall be uh, missionaries. He says, you'll be my witnesses. Yeah. So I think this is, like Bishop Zach is saying, this is our, uh, this is our job. Uh, by the way, in the Romanian language, uh, the word misiune, which we use Misuse. conventionally yeah. uh, is always uh, in, in, within the culture is always uh, looked upon with reluctance because uh, unless you qualify it, you say cross-cultural mission or to define that you are good, nobody understands. I mean, when you say mission is like your company sends you to do something or some army sends you to fight. Uh, the word mission yeah. isn't... Yeah. Uh, full of religious, you know, it's uh, it's a borrowed term somehow, and people kind of look strangely and reluctant, like what mission, what? So, same here in, in in Eastern Europe. And for me, the point really, the reason why language matters, and this is not just about language, is that language constructs reality. Oh yeah. But language also ex expresses patterns of power, and the key word here is what patterns of power relationships do does the gospel embody does the gospel command in the world it's not dominating the other it's it's the sharing of everything that god has given to us um and what we share um and this whole language you know just just to go back to believer non-believer mm -hmm. again that is unnecessary um because if you check all human beings are people of faith the question is what is the object of that faith mm -hmm. what's the subject of that faith um <clears throat> So we need to find ways in which we speak that in which we all can speak about shared human solidarity made by God in his image, ways in which it's God who is doing yeah. his work in his world, in ways that we are subordinate, we, are subje we subject ourselves to that work of yeah. the spirit, whatever he is at work. Again, back to language, by the way. This he, she thing, as a reference to God, is very much a problem of European languages. Mm. Uh, he, she thing. Because in my mother tongue, any reference to God, we don't actually have an issue of he, she. Neutral? It's not even neutral. neutral no. no, no, it's not neutral, actually. It's that God is in a category of his own. Yeah. There is... Authority. It's, it's not. It's not authority. It's yeah. neither he or she. Yeah. He's God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's God. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the, the, but the by the way, I I find not only language problematic, and I would like to say this for our friends, 
language requires grammar i find not only the language problematic i find the grammar problematic Me grammar meaning the brain not the brain but the uh, mind structures of language that allow for the language to be put together so the problem is not only the words we speak but how our mind has come to construct a grammatical pattern to That's speak true. those That's languages. Extremely, extremely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the genius of Pentecost is that we need to hear the praises of God in all these languages. Yes. So the domination of language is another challenge of empire. Yes. That's another challenge. So it's in learning languages, I, I say to my friends, we don't learn other people's languages in order to preach at them. We learn other people's languages in order to hear the voice of God in that language. Yes, because mm. languages have not been given to divide, but to unite. Yeah. Sure, so much insights here. Um, I'm still reeling on that. What patterns of power relationship does the gospel embody? Um, I can see uh, Ms. Renee August is here. Um, she'll be leading us into the next session, but I do want to quickly note what I'm seeing in the, chat, in the chat. Emil noted that how about using what is already described in the New Testament, the word witness, we are to be witnesses. We, we will go and do witness. Um, that was his contribution. Cheryl added something on um, Slido whilst she was speaking, uh, Bishop. So uh, she mentioned not just a collusion with power, I think that's when we're talking about churches, um, but driven with the mindset of commercialization. Cheryl, I believe you had a question. Do you want to quickly um, mention your question here before we move on? Is that okay? Yes, it was, yes sure. It was, it was just also, hi, Zach, nice to see you. It was also to say you? that. Yeah, <laughs> totally delighted. <laughs> Um, decisions within within the Christian world now, in the church world or, or, or um, um, aid world or however, decisions are not just managerial in nature, so secularization, but also they're underpinned by financial and or status symbols. So we so more and more we the way we think and make decisions are becoming commercialized. And so our language of success, has changed what we think success is. And I just wanted you to comment because you've talked about power, but power also shows itself through um, these other symbols. So I always say that we've got to make distinctions of different power patterns that are, um, and every social occasion, every relationship is a relationship of power. Every relationship, whether it's a commercial relationship, whether it's a familial relationship, it's a relationship in kinship, gender relation, it's always relationships about power exchange and the nature of that power. So absolutely, the nature of empire we describe is that it's exercising power in ways that dominate, ways in which, and, and the question of economic relations that are by which nature they are they 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 perpetuate empire and domination is because they are grounded in greed mm. greed 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 so one of the challenges of today's economy they are really driven by greed and it's very interesting that the capitalist system is fairly honest that it's a greed system it's actually very honest the economists will tell you it's a greed system and it's driven by the desire by the motivation for greed and and so we we are called in in the in the gospel it's not greed it's sharing it's that there is enough for all of us to go around mm. uh, there's enough god has given us enough to share together for we own nothing we brought nothing into the world we shall take away nothing so this this whole this whole question of ownership you know you own land the commoditization of things that are not ours we own nothing so all to say that if there is the economy or, or economy, the economy, that word of economy is about us sharing together mm. the riches that God has given to us. So, so you're absolutely right. So the genius of the gospel is that in taking decisions of a business nature, we are always challenged. Generosity, generosity, sharing, sharing. Are churches making those decisions? Uh, those are the kinds of questions that we should be asking in terms of what the witness to the gospel of Jesus really means. Yeah, okay, I'm going to have to end our discussion there. Um, it's been very rich. 
Uh, and of course, I mean, the whole idea is to continue having these discussions and, and conversations. So thank you so much for your time, Bishop, and uh, Dr. George Luca, um, and to everyone else here as well for participating and asking great questions and for your contributions and comments. Um, it's been wonderful to listen and reflect with we, one another. So, we yeah. hug you all. We hug you all. <laughs> we receive. We receive. Good to see you, Craig. Uh, Craig, good to see you. And so on, all my friends. Delighted. Thank you.